G'day and welcome to my City Skylines 2 tutorial series. Click on the playlist in the description below to check out the other videos in this series. Road networks vary wildly in City Skylines 2, starting with narrower alleys and streets and expanding to medium roads, large roads and then highways as the city evolves and gains development points. These smaller streets serve to direct traffic towards larger collector roads, which in turn funnel vehicles towards arterial roads and then onto highways. This hierarchy also works in reverse, with highways directing traffic onto arterials, collectors and then finally the local neighbourhood roads. The key concept here is that each step up this road hierarchy, there's an increase in the volume of vehicles intended for greater speeds over longer distances. For instance, local neighbourhood streets cater to the local travel needs of residents, allowing them to move around their neighbourhood, while collectors connect residents to nearby amenities or commercial zones. Arterials facilitate longer trips across the city, such as from residential areas to the city centre or to their place of work. Highways provide a way to travel from one town or city to the next. And as the urban population grows, although these road networks may require upgrades to accommodate increased usage, the underlying strategy or hierarchy remains the same. To facilitate faster travel over longer distances, arterials will feature fewer crossroads or intersections compared to their smaller counterparts, which have numerous intersecting roads for better connectivity and the use of pedestrian pathways in residential zones is also recommended to get the residents moving around on foot, especially as at the time this video was released, the game currently lacks bikes and bike paths or roads with dedicated bike lanes. Beyond the physical structure of the road network, effective traffic management plays a pivotal role in maintaining flow and reducing congestion. Implementing traffic signals at critical intersections, employing roundabouts for smoother traffic circulation, and designating one-way streets to avoid bottlenecks can significantly improve the efficiency of your city's road network. Adaptive traffic management systems, which adjust signal timings based on real-time traffic conditions, can be a game-changer for real-world busy urban areas. And although we can't quite go that far in the game without third-party mods at this stage, it's something to keep in mind. When we talk about road hierarchy, this goes hand in hand with transit hierarchy, as transportation, or mass transit, works in a very similar way. And we know that implementing efficient mass transit can also significantly alleviate road traffic. In this analogy, air and sea routes are like mass transit's highways catering to the longest distances at the fastest speeds. Railways resemble arterials designed for rapid transit across fast distances with minimal interruptions. Subways serve a broader area than typical local transit, offering multiple stops across different city regions. Then buses and trams are ideal for navigating local neighbourhoods, stopping far more frequently. It's crucial to design road and transit systems that complement each other seamlessly. For example, integrating bus lanes on arterial roads not only prioritises mass transit, but also reduces delays caused by general traffic congestion. Moreover, creating transit hubs where passengers can easily transfer between bus, tram, subway lines or trains encourages the use of public transport thereby reducing the overall demand on road networks. Consider how park and ride facilities near major transit stations can serve as effective nodes that integrate personal vehicle use with public transit, thereby offering a practical solution for commuters. Establishing a clear transit hierarchy not only enhances the utilisation of your mass transit network, reducing road congestion, but also ensures a smoother, more efficient journey for your citizens. We can also draw inspiration from real-world cities that have mastered the art of transportation integration. For instance, Copenhagen's investment in cycling infrastructure and its integration with public transport serves as a model for reducing urban congestion and promoting healthier lifestyles. 
Similarly, the efficient use of bus rapid transit or BRT lanes in Curitiba, Brazil, showcases how dedicated lanes for buses can significantly improve transit reliability and speed, acting as an artery through the city that complements the road network. And there are hundreds of examples of this in cities all over the world. So next time you're creating your road and transit networks across your cities, don't forget to keep these hierarchies in mind. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss out on the next one. Thanks so much for watching and happy building!